Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tip. My name is Julian and this is the weekly waiver wire episode for week 16 of the fantasy hockey season. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about players that you should consider adding to your team ahead of week 16 to help you secure that victory and make it a lot easier for you to win. Before we get started, guys, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and follow me on Twitter at Fantasy Tip. I'm constantly posting stuff there to help you guys win each and every week, so be sure to do that. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the schedule for this coming week. So as you can see here, guys, week 16 is actually a two-week period. It was actually originally going to be a month due to the All-Star break and the Olympic break, but now that there's no Olympic break, it's just the All-Star break. So this week is two weeks, and then the following couple of weeks are normal seven-day weeks. So the first thing to note, guys, is that there are no games Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from February 3rd to February 6th due to the All-Star break. So you have a little bit of a break in your schedule. You don't have to set any lineups. Just give yourself a little bit of rest during that time. The other thing to note is that the only busy night is the first Tuesday, February 1st with 11 games. Every other night is relatively empty. So you may have room for players in your lineup every single night other than maybe Tuesday because none of the nights are that busy, which is honestly pretty good, which, I mean, check out your lineup to make sure that you can fit players first before you just blindly add players, but there's a very good chance that you will be able to fit players in your lineup. Now, week 16 is really bad for a few teams. There are three teams that only play one game during this 10-day slate, and those teams are Los Angeles, New York Rangers, and the San Jose Sharks. Really not great if you own players from these teams. So if you own any lower-owned players from these teams, I would strongly consider dropping them because they're not going to help you. All three of these teams play their one game before the All-Star break, so you could hang on to these players until that game has passed and then swap them for the next week. So for example, I have Alex to follow in one of my leagues, and I won't won't be dropping him until that first Wednesday and after that I'll be letting him go for the rest of the week because he's not going to do anything for me and there are three teams that also play only two games and those teams are Anaheim, Florida and St. Louis so these teams aren't the most useful in your lineup either. Florida plays both their games before the All-Star break and St. Louis plays both their games after the break. Anaheim has one and one. Now because of all these rescheduled games that we've had a couple of teams have really, really optimal schedules for this week. And the number one team to own for this week is the Ottawa Senators. They play seven games in this 10-day slate, which is absolutely incredible. They play Monday, Tuesday of that first week, and then they play Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday of that second week, which makes owning Ottawa Senators players for this week insanely valuable because it really is going to help you win this week because they're going to just play so much. The New Jersey Devils also play six games. They have the exact same schedule as Ottawa, except for they do not play the second Saturday, but six games is a lot as well. And if you have Devils players or you want to grab some Devils players for this week, that's definitely a solid idea. Then there are a few teams that play five games, which is pretty good as well. And those teams are Arizona, Calgary, Edmonton, Toronto, Vancouver, and the Washington Capitals. Now, jumping into forwards, you should consider grabbing a number one on the list is Josh Norris of the Ottawa Senators. Why? Well, I just explained it, guys. Ottawa plays seven freaking games this week. Josh Norris is their top line center, plays top power play center as well. He's in a really good opportunity to put up a lot of points over seven freaking games. Really, really a great pickup if he's available. Seriously, guys, if he's available in your league, you absolutely have to pick him up for this week. Then I have Jesper Brad of the New Jersey Devils. He's also an amazing pickup if somehow he's available in your league. He's New Jersey's highest pointing player this year, and he's been honestly sensational all year, pretty much a point per game the entire season, playing on a line with Jack Hughes, top power play as well. Jesper Bratt is definitely someone you should consider for those six New Jersey games this week. Then I have Connor Garland of the Vancouver Canucks. They play five games this week, which is pretty good. And he's playing right now on a line with Hoaglander and Elias Pettersson, which is a pretty good place to be because Pettersson's playing a lot better lately. And Garland's got himself a safe floor every single night because he likes to shoot the puck a decent amount. Definitely a good add there. Then I have Evander Kane of the Edmonton Oilers. And he's finally signed with Edmonton. The league's not going to discipline him any further, which is awesome. And he's probably going to play with either McDavid or Dreisaitl. Either way, he's going to be on the top power play for sure. And this dude has a wicked shot. So regardless of what he's like off the ice, guys, he is an incredible player. And playing with studs like Leon and Connor, you know he's going to do very, very well. 
really like the ad and the Oilers play five games this week as well. So definitely a great ad with Evander Kane. Then I have Jesse Pugliarvi of the Edmonton Oilers, 40% rostered, currently on a line with Leon Dreisaitl. And yeah, he hasn't been necessarily the best lately, but the Oilers have five games this week and they also play five games in week 17. So it's a good ad for next week as well. So Pugliarvi, I know he hasn't necessarily been the best, but the opportunity is definitely there playing with Leon, so I don't mind the ad. Next, I have Clayton Keller of the Arizona Coyotes, somehow only 38% owned, been pretty much a point per game all year. He's honestly been sensational, so I honestly, I, I can't understand why he's so low rostered at this point. Like, he's been great all year round, and Arizona has five games on their schedule this week, so makes for a good ad even just for schedule this week. Guys, Clayton Keller really should be picked up in a lot more of leagues. Next is my Manscaped must-add player of the video, Tim Stutzla. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code word FANTASYTIPPED at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code word FANTASYTIPPED. Unlock your confidence, guys, and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Now, why is Tim Stutzla my Manscaped must-add player of the video? Well, honestly, guys, it's pretty simple. I told you guys already how good of a schedule Ottawa has this coming week. They play seven freaking games, and Tim Stutzla gets to center the second line and also gets to play on the top power play in Ottawa. And lately, he hasn't been playing half bad either. So for that reason, Tim Stutzla is an excellent add just honestly, just for the schedule, and he's also a great player as well. So definitely someone you're going to want to consider adding to your team this week. Next is Nico Hishier on the top line in New Jersey with Bastion and Zaka. Not necessarily the best line in the world, but he's a really solid player and also gets top power play time in New Jersey. And for that six-game slate next week, that's definitely someone you want to consider streaming. Then I have Michael Bunting and Ilya Mikheyev of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Michael Bunting gets to play left wing on Austin Matthews' line, and Mikheyev gets to play left wing on Marner and Tavares' line. Both excellent deployment, and the Leafs play five games next week, which is pretty solid. And next is another Toronto Maple Leaf, Andre Kasha, and he plays on the right wing of Austin Matthews' line and therefore is a solid pickup as well. He's been injured for a little bit. That's why he's only 8% rostered, but he's a really solid player, and he gives you a pretty safe floor each and every night because he likes to shoot the puck. Then I have Yegor Sharangovich of the New Jersey Devils, 6% rostered, but he gets to play on a line with Jack Hughes and Jesper Bratt, so by default, he should collect some assists. He's not the best player in the world, but I actually kind of like the way he plays, and I think that he's going to do relatively decently for that six-game slate that New Jersey has. Then I have Kyler Yamamoto of the Edmonton Oilers, 5% rostered, and he's playing on a line currently with Connor McDavid. So by default, like he's bound to get some assists, right? And it's also for the future because... Oilers do play five games this week, but they also play five games and a seven-game slate next week. So that's definitely someone you want to consider stashing for both this week and next week because of simply schedule. And then I have Matt Boldy, who's a bonus Manscaped must-add player. Remember, guys, use my code word fantasy tip for 20% off your order if you go to manscaped.com. Matt Boldy has been excellent since he's been raised from the AHL. He's playing on a line with Fiala and he's getting a lot of top power play time. And he's been basically a point per game since being in the NHL. He's looked really, really great and he should be owned in a lot more than 5% of leagues. Now, Minnesota doesn't have the best schedule in the world. I believe they have only three games in week 16. But it doesn't really matter to me. I think Boldy should be added in a lot more leagues. And next is Dylan Strom. Chicago Blackhawks only 4% rostered, but has 9 points in his last 8 games, including a hat-trick plus an assist in his most recent game. Yeah, he's playing pretty well, and he's playing on the top line with Patrick Kane and Brandon Hagel, which is a pretty solid line, and been seeing some power play time lately as well. So honestly, Dylan Strom makes for a pretty solid add in deeper leagues, and definitely could shoot up if he keeps up this hot play. Next is Nick Schmaltz of the Arizona Coyotes playing on the top line and top power play with Clayton Keller. And over his last six games, he has seven points. So he's definitely on a bit of a tear right now. And playing with Clayton Keller on both top line and top power play, how could you not do well, right? So as long as he's hot, guys, you can stream Nick Schmaltz for sure. And Arizona has a pretty decent schedule with five games this week. So 
I don't mind the ad at all. Next is Alex Formanton of the Ottawa Senators. Somehow only 3% rostered, but over his past 10 games, he has 10 points. Add that to the fact that Ottawa plays seven games this coming week. You absolutely have to add this guy. I can't understand why he's only 3% rostered, guys. He really should shoot up for this coming week. Same thing with Zach Sanford of the Ottawa Senators. Only 1% rostered, but... He got moved up to the top line with Brady Kachuk and Josh Norris, and it's going to stick because Batherson unfortunately got injured. So Zach Sanford is going to be playing on that top line and therefore has a really good opportunity to put up points for those seven games. I've already picked him up in one of my leagues. Then I have Tyler Ennis, and because Batherson was hurt, Ennis took his spot on the top power play, which is definitely huge for his value, and is also now playing on the second line with Formanton and Stutzla, and therefore has a decent amount of value. And last but not least, for forwards, I have Travis Boyd of the Arizona Coyotes, 1% rostered, playing on the top line with Schmaltz and with Clayton Keller, and you can't really go wrong there. Jumping into some defensemen now, and the number one guy to add is Jared Spurgeon of the Minnesota Wild, 56% rostered, and... In two games coming back from injury, he's already scored four points. And if you go back to his two games before he was injured, he has eight points in his last four games. He's a top power play defenseman. He's the captain of the team. He's a really good player. He's someone who should be added in a lot more leagues right now. Then I have Mark Giordano, who's been playing a lot better as of late, putting up quite a few points lately. And he's playing on that top power play in Seattle. So he does have the opportunity to keep putting up those points, and I don't mind him as an ad. Then I have Evan Bouchard of the Edmonton Oilers, 44% owned, and because Tyson Berry is injured, Evan Bouchard is now seeing some top power play time in Edmonton, and he's seeing some more ice time as well. Therefore, Evan Bouchard makes for a pretty solid ad right now. Then I have Rasmus Anderson of the Calgary Flames, 32% roster, seeing top power play time on Calgary, definitely a solid ad. And I have Noah Dobson of the New York Islanders. And although he hasn't necessarily been putting up a lot of points, his peripherals have been there. So I do not mind adding Noah Dobson to your team. He's someone that I see doing pretty well for the rest of the season. Then I have Hampus Lindholm of the Anaheim Ducks. And I don't love Anaheim's schedule for week 16. So don't get me wrong. If I think that if I don't add him, nobody else is going to pick him up, then I won't pick him up. But Hampus Lindholm is seeing top power play time in Anaheim right now and therefore is a pretty solid option. Then I have Damon Severson of the New Jersey Devils been playing really, really well lately and he's seeing top power play time there. So as long as he keeps seeing that, he's a really good ad, especially for those six games that the Devils have coming up. Honestly, probably one of the better ads that you can add for those six games. And Dougie Hamilton could come back at some point, but until he does, guys, Damon Severson is a really, really good ad. Then I have Brian Dumoulin of the Pittsburgh Penguins, only 8% rostered. He's Chris Letang, his defensive partner, and he's been putting up some points lately. He's also pretty good for peripherals, gets to put up a few blocks, a few shots per game. Don't mind adding Brian Dumoulin. Gives you a pretty safe floor night in and out. Then I have Artem Zub of the Ottawa Senators. And he's not really seeing power play time anymore, but he still will give you a relatively safe floor with blocks and hits every single night. And Ottawa plays seven games, so what is the harm of giving yourself seven games of safe floor? Those points are going to add up. And last but not least, it's kind of a silly one, Eric Brandstrom. And right now he's on the COVID protocol. So what I did in one of my leagues, I added him directly to my IR because I have quite a few injuries, guys that I know are coming back soon. So I added Brandstrom and I just alternating him with a bunch of guys that I have on my IR to make sure I'm able to get a whole bunch of games in next week. So he's not playing every single game, but honestly, Brandstrom is not the worst ad in the world. He does play second power play. And because of that, he's going to have a chance of getting some points for Ottawa. And he's a good young defenseman. So who knows? Maybe he will play pretty well. Jumping into goalies now, and first on the list is Ville Husso of the St. Louis Blues, 59% owned, and it looks like he's taking over the crease right now in St. Louis. So Jordan Bennington owners especially should be adding Ville Husso before somebody else grabs him because you're going to lose your St. Louis starts if you don't. Then I have Vitek Vanacek of the Washington Capitals, 57% roster, and he's been getting the vast majority of the starts in Washington lately. And because of that, he's someone that should be added because Washington is a good team. Samsonov is not someone I'm dropping just yet. But as long as Vanacek plays well, he's going to get the majority of the starts. Then I have Pavel Francouz of the Colorado Avalanche. And I've been repping this guy for so, so many weeks now. And he's finally seeing about half the starts in Colorado because he's been playing so well. He's got two shutouts in a row as of this recording. 
And so he makes for an excellent ad for half the starts for one of the best teams in the league. Then I have James Reimer of the San Jose Sharks, 44% owned. And he's going to be starting the majority of the games for San Jose going forward. Aiden Hill is injured right now. So Reimer will get pretty much every single start until Hill is ready to play. Then I have Miko Koskinen of the Edmonton Oilers. Played well his last couple games. And Mike Smith, who knows when this guy's going to come back. He was supposed to be back by now, but he's taken way too long to recover from his injuries this year. And I think the Oilers might end up trading for a goalie because of Mike Smith's inability to stay healthy. But for now, Koskinen's doing just fine and should get the majority of the starts. Then I have Calvin Peterson of the Los Angeles Kings, 36% rostered, and he's been playing a lot better lately. So we could start seeing half the starts in LA like he has been lately. Jonathan Quick is also a decent ad as well. If he's available in your league, he's also seeing half the starts in LA right now. Then I have Matt Murray and Anton Forsberg of the Ottawa Senators, both 10% rostered. And regardless of who the starter is in Ottawa, they play seven games, including three sets of back-to-backs, which means that each of these goalies is going to get at least three starts. One of them is going to get four, which is fantastic if you want to just even stream them for this week both really good ads because they're, they're going to get starts because they're playing seven freaking games. Then I have Michael Hauser and Craig Anderson of the Buffalo Sabres, 2% and 6% rostered. Hauser should start Buffalo's game on Tuesday because Dell is suspended for it. But then Craig Anderson is supposed to be ready to come back after the All-Star break. So it could be him that's ready to go right after the break. Craig Anderson should be ready to go soon. So if you want to just add him and stash him on an IR spot, that might be a solid call. Then I have Samuel Montembeau of the Montreal Canadiens. And he should be back this weekend. And once he does come back, he should resume the starter duties in Montreal until Jake Allen and or Price are ready, but I mean, that's going to be a long time from now. And last but not least, I have John Gilead of the New Jersey Devils, and the Devils have six games next week. I've already reiterated that a lot of times this video, but if Blackwood stays on IR that entire time, John Gillies will see four starts, which is pretty solid, and Akira Schmidt would get two starts because there are two sets of back-to-backs. And honestly, John Gilly as well, he's not the best goal in the world. If you do need starts and you're desperate for starts, he's definitely someone you can consider. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I hope you guys enjoyed the content today, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.